you, you just finished the, the course, you came here to, to give. How was it? How would you describe the experience, first of all? Well, the experience for me was excellent. I mean, uh, so many people who are attending, and uh, as I've probably told you before, I've been working uh, in many countries, and uh, well, this was very good for me as a, uh, as a coach facilitator, as, uh, and meet people who are really willing to uh, progress in uh, coaching well for Okay, so we're now moving on to the, the questions sent by our readers. Uh, first of all, uh, what kind of changes did the new rules of the last 10 years brought onto the training process? Uh, to the pro training process a lot. I think that, uh, first of all, I think the rule changes have been uh, very good. Sometimes you can question, of course, uh, if this applied to men and women's water polo for the same. But I think uh, for the training process it has been speeding up a lot. Well for, well, for example, the field has been bigger for the women at the first start and then it starts to be smaller. So you have to do the, the physical training differently. And, you know, if you train practice, if, if you practice really c correctly, you, know, you, you do have a lot of advantage. The game has been speeded up a lot, especially with the uh, exclusion time, which uh, became shorter. And uh, so the game has been faster, so you really have to adjust to that. Uh, next question, uh, what are the physical differences between a player from the 19th and a player today? Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of changes because uh, first of all, uh, the science has been uh, much more into the, uh, into the water polo nowadays. Uh, the weight training has been much more in, uh, important. So I think physical it would be a lot of difference. I think uh, you can rank like the, the athletes in those days, you can uh, rank those uh, athletes like I think seven or eight, and at the moment you can rank them to a ten. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoran Kasic, the goalkeeper's coach of the Croatian team, uh, was in Portugal a few weeks ago. Uh, we had a, an interview with him, and he said it's very important for us to create water polo schools uh, in order to better teach the future players and to have a, to have a better future in the sports overall. Uh, in your opinion, what's the key in the education of young players? Well, first of all, you need, I think, the, which is called the long-term athlete development program, which describes each stage, uh, a, uh, uh, describes each stage, the, the tactical, technical, physical and mental. It describes what you have to do in, in any age. And most of all, the player is the compass. So the player is the leading, uh, the leading person you are uh, base your programs on, instead of the other way around. We like uh, we like much uh, like to win in any age in any age group, but the LTPD program provides you in any age group and any uh, uh, boys or girls group pro provides you with a um, with a aim which is set for this uh, player as center based program. How do you make a young boy understand the importance of the dry and wet practice? Well, I think, I think you know, like I'm a European, I'm from the Netherlands, but I quite like what uh, the Americans are doing in uh, Let's Do It, Just Do It, like, uh, you know, the big sports brand which is working with this slogan. I like it, just, okay, let's do it, just go for it and uh, don't make a point of it, just uh, say, quarter of an hour before the training session, start doing your dryland warm-up and slowly build into this uh, dryland uh, training as well. Uh, in Portugal there are no rules on players' transactions. Uh, all players are free to change club during summer and the clubs don't need to pay anything for, for the players, even if they're young. Uh, every once in a, in a while we see the good players from smaller clubs joining the best clubs and ultimately the best clubs have the best players most of the time. Do you think the, the lack of rules uh, in this is the cause for the players to easily join other clubs and leave their former team empty-handed? Uh, do you think it's an important rule? What's your uh, opinion on this subject? I don't know about the rules, but I think it's very important to think about the players. The players has to be developed in order to have more fun in the sport more results in the sport. So if the, if the, if the bigger clubs do um, provide this good training for these players, I think they're doing right. 
but if the bigger clubs are not doing this uh, this thing right, of course they should stay with the uh, with the younger clubs or with the smaller clubs. And I think it's it's all about a personal thing for each uh, for each individual themselves. I think you know if they're it's the ambition the the, the the young player probably have, and if he can cannot find it with the smaller club, they always will go. So I don't think this is a thing of bigger clubs or smaller clubs. I think this is more a thing of uh, the the players themselves. And if the smaller clubs don't want the better players to go, they probably have to develop their own club in any way or in any cooperation maybe with other clubs or maybe in cooperation with the bigger clubs to uh, keep the players at their own team. So I think look at the player first. They are the most important in our sport because it's not us, it's not the clubs, it's not the coaches, it's not the referees, it's not the officials. It's the player who is important. So if this player is, has a lot of ambition, I think they should they, they should move if, if they can go uh, and do something better or be, be better players at other clubs. And if the small clubs don't like this, I understand, of course I understand, <laughs> but you, have, you really have to think about what should I do to keep these players to my club and probably you have to uh, uh, progress your club. Uh, we know you, you work with the Swedish Federation uh, in order to improve their, their water polo. In the last few years Portugal won against Sweden a couple of times, but we are still in the same level as them. Uh, which is trying to qualify to the, for the European Championship. If you were responsible for the Portuguese national team, what kind of strategy would you apply? Well, it's a hard question to answer. It's a hard question to answer because it's, I know more about Portuguese water polo now than, of course, one year ago before I started uh, helping out uh, by Len and doing this coach education program. But I think you first look at what, what is required to be uh, in this level of play. And what's required is a lot of, a lot of training. Okay? There's, a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of research that's been done. So you have to practice so much hours and I don't even say about the quality of practice or what kind of practice you have to do. But I think first of all, we should understand that the players are the most important and they have to deliver the, the training hours. So if the uh, starting environment would be that it is impossible to practice that many hours as a national team, you should cooperate with the clubs. And if the clubs don't want to cooperate in this, in this, in this sense, okay, you should uh, uh, provide or organize a, uh, a program for each individual or for a team to, uh, to, to become better. And I, I'm not really sure if this is um, existing at the moment, but. Uh, what I know from the Netherlands, uh, what I've did, what I've done as a national team coach in the Netherlands, has been uh, successful to, um, to to have a centralized program with the national team. And, uh, but I, I'm not sure if this is uh, possible in uh, in Portugal. But this is one way to you can go. Mm -hmm. But I think first of all, we all have to understand that the players, if they are doing this with the club, if they're practicing at the club or if they're practicing as a national team, like full-time of all the time as a national team, the players have to first make the switch to more training. Mm -hmm. And again, they are the most important. And I think I should, I should like to cooperate with clubs. That's, my first, uh, that's the first thing I would like to do. I like to do. First, try to find out if the clubs want to cooperate. If they don't want to cooperate, I think I would go for plan B. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Uh, related to, to your answer, uh, currently the strategy for the Portuguese national team is that each team gets together one week, uh, one weekend every every month and practice for about uh, six hours, two times a day. How do you think the national team practices should be managed in order to achieve the qualification of, for the European Championship? Yes, you you are saying in order of the last answer of my last answer. I think it's. It's, it's 90 percent the same answer. First of all, the players should understand they have to do more. And if the possibility is there to get them all the time as a team, I think you should take this chance. But if it's not possible to get them as a team all the time, okay, you go for plan B, and plan B can be that you cooperate with clubs. 
but first of all, like you know, you have to practice at least the, at least 15 hours a week to 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 uh, to go one level higher. And if this is possible to do uh, as a team, that is better than to do like all individuals to get uh, individuals at uh, different places. And um, but first of all, the work has been done. So you have to find out which work can you do by yourself, which work has to be done uh, has to be done by um, as a team. Okay, and if it's if it's not possible financial or what kind of problems you you find out. Okay, you find out. Uh, I, I like to do things like we have internet. Okay, we have uh, we have like um, like uh, forum clubs. We can do a lot of things like this. We can do a lot with video. But uh, my first thing would be um, make sure the players are practicing those hours they have to. And if this is at the club or as a national team, I think everybody understands that. Okay, each team would be a better team if you practice like more time together. So, uh, Thomas Faragou said a while ago on an interview in the Modern Ball magazine that he thinks we should change some rules, uh, like make the ball smaller to fit most of the players or playing 25 meters to force the players to have the ball in their hand more time and turn the game more interesting. Do you agree with this? Uh, yes, and he even had one more. And he, had, so he said maybe we should play with one player less than we're doing at this moment. I think you should you should you should look at this very seriously or the, 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 the responsible people. On the other hand you also have to understand that people from Len and from Fina are also thinking about it and they really like to promote our sport in a great way. But people like Thomas Farago they you should take their 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 um, their thoughts really really uh, really seriously. And all the things you are saying, I can relate to. I like a fast game. I like a game. Everybody likes our game when it is fast. And Waterpolo is very spectacular. And I think this rule changes he uh, he did uh, he did uh, said to you or to to an, another website. I think it it was it, it it it. I think they make a lot of sense. Yes, go back to twenty five meters. It's a good idea. I think. Because you know it makes sense if you go if you think about uh, you know like between offense and defense as you know there's some time spent and we only see people swimming up and down mm -hmm. so it would be really well. On the other hand, if you really love water polo and this is a starting environment again, like you have to play this as much you can tire your your opponent down. Mm -hmm. But in order to sell our sport and to uh, promote our sport, I think smaller field would be very nice. And I would like to add one uh, to this because I think I think you should uh, reward water polo should be rewarded by if you shoot the ball outside seven meters and you shoot it straight away in should be re being rewarded with two goals like uh, the basketball had had have their uh, three point line. Uh, do you think the world projection of our sport on the television is good and enough to to raise the popularity of the sport? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know where you focus on. If you focus on uh, like a regional uh, broadcast uh, agency, just in any country, they probably televise our sport with one camera. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, that I think that can be better. Let's, let's say it like this. If you look to World Championships, Olympics, and if you look at um, uh, European Championships, our sport is brought into picture great. Do you have any idea on how to improve the, the viewing experience of a water polo match on the television, other than like having more cameras? I think the, the one who's doing the commentating is, is, is very important. And uh, because if, if you under if water polo, I, I always used to say to people who don't know water polo, just look at it for at least three games and you do understand. But you need somebody beside you who says, okay, this is rule one, this is rule two, this is rule two. So the commentator is, is I think, very, uh, very important with this.